Okay, uh, but uh, we already have a different kingdom of medicine like uh, animal, plant, mineral, imponderabilia. But the nozode is very much unique to our system. That's we are preparing medicine from noxious substances or disease objects. And uh, I think uh, no other system or other therapeutic system have this kind of medicine. Okay, I think uh, I can discuss more about today and uh, right. about the experience too with the nozodes. And uh, actually, uh, we people very love a nozodes than any other group of medicine like uh, mineral or plant or animal. And it is very easy to prescribe and understand. And his action is very much uh, what to say is a guaranteed about the action of nozodes. This fear of action is guaranteed. Okay, I think uh, I can share my ideas, and after that, yes, yes, um, definitely, you'll be definitely. confident about it. We it's uploaded now. It's looking, showing us converting. Yeah, converting. It'll just take another minute or so. Actually, we are uh, very looking forward to this because uh, there's not so much of literature, as Jan was saying, on no swords. There's not so much of information. So it is always nice to hear from people who use no swords in their day to day. Uh, what I've heard of no swords is that it's used more as an intercurrent remedy. Uh, yes, that yes. was what we initially heard. I mean, now, of course, we are going to learn a little differently, I think. Yes, now it's uh, what to do, doctor. It's now you just uh, you click on that file. Conversion is over. over. What over. to do next? Now you, now you can share that file. How? Let me see if it's uploaded. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Let me just let me start it for you. Then you can control it from there. Okay. Okay. You can use your right arrow or the left arrow to move up. Can you just move the is slide and see how? Yeah, is it's it already up. Doctor? Uploaded? Yes, it's up and sharing. Okay, okay, okay. I've also started sharing it. Can you use your right arrow uh, to just see if the slides are moving? You can move the slides. Okay. Okay. Is it audible? Is it visible? Yeah, I, we, yes, we can see you. Uh, it, is everybody else able to see the screen with the no swords? Uh, let me check in the live. Yes, I think it's there on the screen. I can see it on Facebook. We are also live on Facebook. And I think uh, now uh, uh, just a small introduction about Dr. Wahab and where he is from, where he comes from. Dr. Wahab is one of the main teachers in uh, Sahya. Uh, and you all know that I've been talking to you about Sahya every month. Sahya is an organization I um, adore, admire, because it's one of the organizations uh, which is mainly for sharing knowledge among homeopaths. Uh, and uh, the idea is that when you need to be serious because what they do is uh, serious business. They are interested in identifying homeopaths who are keen in developing their knowledge. Uh, they have a, um, a year-long course, I think, uh, where you need to apply for and then they have a system of identifying who, who they take on. But if you ever get the chance, you uh, sign up for them for their courses or join their Facebook group. Uh, it's it's been run by Dr. Biju, who's uh, done yeoman service in homeopathy for Kerala. Uh, he was also recently awarded the best homeopathic doctor of, in Kerala by the uh, health minister of Kerala. And uh, so Dr. Wahab also comes from Sahya. He's um, one of the course teachers, right, uh, Dr. Wahab? What do you call yourself? Trainer. I mean, what trainer. do you... Trainers, yeah. Trainer in so, Sahya, Sahya, Jan, uh, Jan it's S A H Y A. Uh, they have a large Facebook group uh, which has got about 4,500 people. 
Uh, so with this, I'd, I'd hand over the mic to Dr. Wahab, uh, and really excited to hear what he's got to say. Okay, Dr. Wahab, all yours. Okay, thank you, Dr. Karthik, sir, for this uh, wonderful opportunity. So uh, good evening, dear friends. Uh, I think uh, it's uh, night here, night here. Okay, so um, no source in homeopathy, and I think all are familiar about no source. And I already said about uh, the homeopathic uh, kingdom of medicines like uh, mineral, plant, animal, no source, sarcodes, and imponderabilia. After all, no source is very unique to homeopathy. And today I'm going to um, explain or share my ideas about no source in a very short, because uh, one hour is very short uh, to express the ideas about no source. Okay, so. Uh, my mentor, actually, uh, Dr. S.G. Bijud, uh, it was mentioned by Dr. Karthik, is the founder of our training school, Sahya. Actually, uh, Dr. S.G. Biju, he is my mentor, and he taught me everything about homeopathy and about uh, practical homeopathy. And even this module, no sword, I had developed from his ideas. What I am sharing about 99% of ideas about no sword are perceived from this great man. The, he's my mentor, and I'm very proud of uh, being him. And uh, we team Sakyas are very proud of him. That he's the chief patron of Sakya, and he's my mentor. And this entire module is developed by from his ideas and experience. Okay, so uh, about uh, no source, and uh, I already said about the no source. No source means we all are very much in Kerala and uh, in every part of the world. The homeopaths are very confident about no source. You know why? Because we don't have any hesitation to repeat no source while we prescribed once. Like we, we have the tendency or the hesitation to repeat the medicines when we are using it from the animal kingdom or the plant kingdom or, or mineral kingdom. But we are very confident about a no source. Okay, so that's the uniqueness of the no source. And uh, uh, we can have a look on which are the areas where the no source coming into play, or which are the areas in our clinical uh, clinical daily practice that no source have some advantage over other kingdom of the school. Okay, and we can have a look on it. Okay, and the first one, the no source, is to the indication to prescribe the no source as a constitutional homeopathic remedy. Like all other medicines, like calcarea carb, like pulsatilla, like Argentum nitricum, every no sword is a personality. It's a different cl clear picture personalities are like medorinum, tuberculinum, carcinosin, syphilinum, sorinum. All are all have a peculiar characteristic like that of other remedy like natrum or ignatia. So first indications of the no sword in our clinical practice is as a constitutional homeopathic remedy that we that we know okay and the second point is that okay just wait and this uh, powerpoint is a little bit slow in uh, uploading okay It's already come up, uh, doctor. OK, 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 I, I can see here. And the when well-chosen remedy fail, or when uh, well-chosen remedies do not hold for the case for a long time. OK, and uh, what, what it means when we are, uh, that we are call it as a intercurrent medicine, that Karthik doctor uh, initially said that no source are using as an intercurrent medicine. OK, when a well-chosen remedy do not hold the case for a long time, we can give any of the medicines like sorinum, tuberculinum, medorinum, or syphilinum according to the need of the case, and we can remove that block. Usually, this usually is caused by a miasmatic block. And the third one, when there is a paucity of the symptoms, do you know what, what you mean paucity of the symptoms? We are sometimes in our clinical daily practice, we are facing there are cases, but only there is paucity of the symptoms, and the cases is not clear. So to, do, to clear up that case, we can give any nozzle according to the need of the case. 
and that will definitely clear up the case. Okay, then we can select a medicine according to the current totality, and that is one of another field of nosot. Okay, and then the next one, when a person suffer from a specific dyscrasia of a particular disease, that is very we know that about the uh, uh, utility of the carbo wedge, right? We are using the carbo wedge if there is any dyscrasia after acute or chronic disease. Actually, carbo wedge is not a nosot; it is a mineral origin. But for example, in a case of typhoid. If a person has a specific dyscrasia or weakness after typhoid, we can use typhoid in a muscle medicine to remove that dyscrasia. That's only a peculiarity of the nozzle. Okay, specific typhoid. In a, if if a patient has gonorrhea and if it is uh, what to know suppressed by any faulty method of treatment, the patient may have memory weakness or lack of stamina or weakness, all the loss of the weak, uh, rigor. Then that patient require a dose of metorinum because that specific dyscrasia caused by gonorrhea will be cleared definitely by a dose of metorinum. Similarly, all these is the variolinum in smallpox and the diphtherinum in case of diphtheria. These all are no so. So a specific disease is occur. We call it as a never well since syndrome. Never well since typhoid, never well since diphtheria, never well since gonorrhea. We can use diphtherinum, typhoidinum, or gonorrhea, uh, sorry, medorinum, respectively. Okay, so uh, that's about one of the characters. Okay, and the next one, this is the most important diagnostic point of NOSOR. That is, when a distorted image of a constitution remedy is present. Okay, that means while we are analyzing the case, we take the case, we have the totality of the symptoms. But when we are analyzing the case, some symptoms are suited to Ignatia, some symptoms are suited to Pulsatla, some suited to Natromor, some suited to Phosphorus. That means there's a cluster of symptoms and that's suited to different remedy, but not fit to a single remedy. So what to do? In that case, we can use a nosode. And this is this pattern is the quiet diagnostic of a nosod as a remedy. Okay, so when a distorted image of a constitution remedy is present, it not no one remedy completely with the case. And this is remember, this is the definitely a diagnosis of a nosod. Okay, and the next one, when a fundamental or dominating miasm obstructing the efficient functioning of a constitution remedy. Uh, let me to explain. We have a case and we prescribed a case according to the totality and the case cleared and patient was well cured. And after several months or six or eight years, patient come back with the same symptoms. Usually what will we do? We will prescribe the same constitutional medicine, but the result is ineffective. That means that remedy once acted is not giving any result. Why? But the symptoms are not changing. The symptoms are not uh, this is the same and is not calling for another remedy. But still, that medicine is not acting long. That means that first constitutional medicine is apparently ineffective. And this is the area of the homeopathy. That is a, a cause of the uh, release of the main theory, main the beautiful theory in the history of the medicine, myasam. Actually, that is a fundamental block. So the medicines like sorinum, medorinum, syphilinum, tuberculinum can remove that block to clear the case. After removing that block, either this nozzle or the initial constitutional remedy may finish the case. Otherwise, that initially acted well chosen remedy didn't give any result. That's we are uh, witnessed in our practice. So that's the uniqueness of no source. Only no source can do that. Either no, any complementary or any follows well track can't give that actions. Only the no source because there is a fundamental block that means a myasa that's unique to our homeopathy that's our cup of tea only our cup of tea only homeopathy can do it okay and the next one i say genus epidemicus okay for example we can use meningococcinum 
in the in epidemic of meningitis the meningococcin is re, is producing from the noxious substance of the meningitis okay so we can use it as a uh, epidemic in a con, uh, epidemic of meningitis okay and we can use the nosod as a prophylaxis to prevent infectious disease for example the, in the history the boning has been has used variolinum to prevent smallpox variolinum to prevent smallpox and even in the covid season and here in in india and kerala uh, we are using asal as a uh, prophylaxis but here we are using the term immune booster because of political reason but anyway and sometimes that was any discussion that influenza is a better choice why because the nosod has always have a better action to as using as a prophylaxis and the history too the burning has and has used it so that's about uh, the using of prophylaxis and the another cup of the tea of the homeopathy that is to use to protect the children from the malefic action of parental or hereditary miasm what it means we know about the inherited miasm if a child if a newborn get inherited miasm either psychosis or syphilitic or psychotic uh, or syphilitic psychosyphilitic miasm from the parent is a higher possibility to develop such kind of uh, infections such kind of infections or diseases in that inborn child child so to remove that dyscrasia we can use metorinum if the inherited miasm is psychosis we can use sifilinum if the inherited miasm is syphilitic we can use carcinosin if the inherited miasm is psychosyphilitic okay and this only homeopathy can do it maybe in the recent or in the coming era if the genetic engineering has developed if it incorporated to the medicinal medical field they may have the chance to clear up the upcoming diseases otherwise apart from the vaccination they can't prevent the disease only homeopathy can so the proud of being a homeopath and only homeopath by this nosod or we can use the term better use the miasmatic prescription we can use this nosod to prevent the inheritance of the disease or the development of the disease due to a inherited miasm this is not a new thing or a new development of theory and we have uh, uh, that uh, example in our literature in lectures on homeopathic materia medica our jt ken has described this is his word if the tuberculinum bovinum be given in 10m 50m cm potencies two doses of each potency at long interval all children and young people who have inherited look to that word inherited tuberculosis may be immune from their inheritance and the, and the resilience will be restored that means at that discrucial restored okay look at that word inherited tuberculosis that means the, if the tubercular miasm is inherited to the child we can save the child from the development of the tubercular diseases by giving a dose of tuberculinum 10m 50m cm in two doses of each potential long interval in uh, see, that's uh, remarkable to our system okay so th- i think uh, it's clear to you okay and the next to one they using the nosod as a homeopathic remedy from the patient's own disease substance it is very uh, uncommon we are not using nowadays because we have plenty of medicines now okay if you are preparing a medicine from a substance or secretions of the our own patient that is known as auto nosod or iso we, we can see the example from the history for example uh, our master dr samuel haniman has done this auto nosod in one of his patient that a thysis patient it was not he tried every medicine apparently all medicine but it didn't give any result so what he did he take the saliva of that patient and potentize and give to that patient that is known as auto nosod or isod that's the a coming era of the nosod which may develop um, maybe unnecessary because of the plenty of the medicines already we have but it's another uh, area of the nose so that have to be developed okay so just remember just take it into mind in a, for only for an academic interest auto nosodes have been made from the sputum 
blood, urine, pus, leucorrhea, or exudation from skin eruptions and microbes from the cultures of the patient. Okay, simply a noxious substance from the patient can potentize and use as a medicine for that patient only, right? That patient only. That is known as autonosal or isonosal. Okay, so that's about uh, this about these uh, peculiarities or the areas of the nozzle that's coming into play or the uh, area where we have to think about the nozzle. Okay, typically remember one or two uh, sim one or two statement that I made means if you get a distorted images of while you take the case you get the distorted image you can think about a nozzle or to prevent any development of the inherited miasm, inherited miasm development, you can prevent, we can use the nosor. Okay, this is about the nosor, I think you are clear. Now we can, um, because our time is too short, we can move to some of the polycrust nosor. And the first one is the carcinosid, carcinosid. Okay, and the cause is a very interesting medicine. I, my mentor, Dr. Ezebich, always said, uh, this carcinosin is the era of this medicine this era of medicine because carcinosin is a psychosyphilitic and this world this era is psychosyphilitic no doubt okay no doubt okay and uh, which sir said always the tuberculinum was the medicine of the previous era and now it shifted to carcinosin okay now we can look to the pathogenesis of carcinosin i use the word pathogenesis okay why i use the pathogenesis every remedy have a pathogenesis it's very unique to a medicine. For example, we know rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. Both conditions have joint pain. It is similar. But when we are looking to the pathogenesis, it's different. Because in rheumatoid arthritis, what happened? It's actually initially is an autoimmune inflammation that causing the synovial hyperplasia, then the joint destruction. That's an inflammatory, that is rheumatoid arthritis. But in case of osteoarthritis, the pathogenesis is different. Where is the synovial fluid is first uh, disturbed, then the subchondral bone, then the bone destruction occur. That means pathogenesis is different. Even the symptoms are same. And that peculiarities are we are used to diagnose the case by using the blood parameters. Because, because of the autoimmune history in RA, we can find out rheumatoid factor or ACCP. But in osteoarthritis, we can't see the ACCP or rheumatoid factor. Okay, RA factor. So that means to diagnose a disease, we are using the knowledge of the pathogenesis, not the symptomatology. Similarly, all remedy have a common symptomatology, but every remedy have a different pathogenesis. If you are trying to understand the pathogenesis, the material medica is very interesting. To remember every symptoms of all medicine is uh, impossible for a normal uh, average intelligent people. Because for, uh, for a, only for a sulfur that have more than 5,000 or 10,000 symptoms, how can we remember all these symptoms? Instead, if we know if the pathogenesis of the sulfur, Pathogenesis of the phosphorus or pulsatla or carcinosin or medorinum, it is easy to diagnose the medicine, diagnose the remedy, whatever may be the symptoms. Now, nowadays, we have the plenty of the software that help us to find out the symptoms of the medicine. But no soft, I think the no softwares can identify a pathogenesis of the medicine that we have to understand. So, in short, I am going to make a note on how the pathogenesis of the carcinosin, how the carcinosin personality has developing. Okay, the four causations are there. The first one thing is the prolonged history of unhappiness, which means what? Prolonged history of unhappiness means suppression, maybe a sick marriage. Maybe a strict parental domination, strict parenting. That means, uh, that means restricting all her freedom or all his uh, interest. She is just sacrificing all his desires and loves for the sake of the family. If a lady is living like that, that means the development or the pathogenesis of the carcinosis is going on. And the second one, 
the prolonged history of anticipation, which means what? Anticipation. If you just uh, let me to, uh, uh, explain. If my boss is very strict and my boss has the uh, habit of uh, punishing me for everything what I done, then what will be in my mind every time when my phone rang, I, I feel, oh, oh, my, oh, my boss is calling to reprimand me, to abuse me. So I'm living for the entire hours of life, entire hours of the day by this anticipation. Or next one, the prolonged history of a fear and fright, how it develops. And uh, if, if a child is abused sexually from an uh, uncle or the neighbor in the childhood abuse, what will be in his, her mind when he see, when he uh, hear the sound of that uncle, he, she get feared, oh, that uncle will come and abuse me or torture me. But at the same time, she don't have the courage to share that to her mother or parents. That means she's living in that anticipation, a sort of fear and fright. And the second, the last one, the prolonged and history of parental domination. That means a strict parenting. And in India, that is very common. That is, the parent will decide what or uh, what is the career of the child. Parent will decide what the dress the child will wear. Parent will decide what kind of the food the child uh, will take. That means all her freedoms are up, that removed by the parents. They are strict to parenting. So, uh, it, so in short, if it is a prolonged history of unhappiness or the anticipation or prolonged fear and fright or prolonged parental domination, what happened? She is a tremendous stress. If it is happening in a patient, that is, means the development of the carcinos in pathology is happened. How can we uh, collect it? Simple. While we are taking the case, you just ask about the state of the patient or about the childhood of the case, childhood of the person, about the life state or life position, we can clearly get the picture of the, his past history, not only the disease, sure, it's important, but about the person diagnosis. And all this, if these four symptoms are there, it's guaranteed that the patient has the tendency to develop all the symptoms of the carcinosin or the carcinosin pathology is, pathogenesis occurred in that patient. Okay, and the Dr. Banerjee sir has used the word, word the doormat. He compared the carcinosin is to doormat. Why? What's the peculiarity of the doormat? The doormat is nothing. The doormat receives all the dirts of the pupil that passing. All the passing pupil will deposit the dirts on the mat. Similarly, carcinosin will receive all the punishment all the sacrifices, all the pain from the parent, lover, husband, or the boss, and still she keeps a smile for the sake of the family. So sometimes uh, it may be uh, uh, very astonishing. How can a lady can smile like this, even with this kind of the bomb inside? That is the peculiarity of the carcinosin. You just imagine how a cancer cell is behaving. If a, a proto-oncogene is activated, a malignant affections happen even for a short time that cell is confined to the particular part after several times it get detached and deposited to another part that is called as metastasis similarly a carcinosin personality will always suppress everything all pain all sufferings and suppress all the dreams for the sake of the family for the sake of the happiness of the family or to smile or to keep the, her child happy. I think you are clear about the pathogenesis of the carcinosin. Okay, and we can look about the identification points of uh, carcinosin. That is the fastidiousness. You know that what is fastidiousness. Fastidiousness is also seen in another medicines like uh, Asal, Anaxomica also. How to differentiate this fastidiousness of carcinosin and asal, very simple. In asal, this fastidiousness is a neurotic one, neurotic fastidiousness, because he has the fear of the disease, fear of the contagion. So he will be fastidious even in the bathroom, asal. 
But in Casinos, and why she become fastidiousness? Because of the fear of the punishment. To make the parent happy, to make the husband happy, to make the boss happy, to get escape from the punishment or the reprimand, she she become a fastidiousness or she keeping fastidiousness. That's the difference of the fastidiousness of Asal and Kasinosin. So what about Naksomika fastidiousness? We know Naksomika is a performer. Naksomika want to be the topper. Naksomika is want to be the perfect person. So he want to be the perfect and the performer. That's why he become fastidiousness. Not because of the fear of the disease or fear of the contagion like Asal or not like to impress uh, uh, her parents or the boss. Instead, Naksomika to do to become the most uh, attractive person or to become the best person type of personality. That's about the fastidiousness. That's one of the identification point of Kausinos. And the next one, the cafe le malls. That means Amangioma or cafe le sports are happen, appear newly in the body. That is an indication of the development of the psychosophilitic myasa. Okay, so it's a uh, guaranteed indication of a carcinosis. And the third one, the ideal or model child. What it means? A carcinosis child is very precocious. That means he's very uh, punctual, is a very, cl very clear in studies and do everything in a perfect manner like an adult. That is an ideal or model child. Everyone like that child. Oh, how mature the ch your child is. Actually, it's saying, nature saying that that child is psychosophilitic myasm. That means that child needs a carcinosin when he get become sick. Okay, so that's about carcinosin. Okay, and uh, another identification clues of carcinosin are sleeplessness, insomnia. Look, insomnia, either at the present or in the past or even during the childhood. If you get a suspicion about the possibility of a carcinosin in a patient, you ask whether uh, you have insomnia, whether you had the insomnia. If that patient has insomnia in the present or in the past or even during the childhood is enough to confirm the possibility of a carcinosin. And then next one, the history of the several infectious disease in childhood. Some child may get infected with mums, chicken pox, measles, and uh, um, scarlet fever, like all kind of infections in the childhood. That means it's saying that that, that child is a carcinosin child, several infections in the childhood. And another very positive symptom is the love for animals and nature loves music and dancing. Love for animal. That's a peculiar of casinos. They're animal and nature. They are fond of animals and nature. Love music and dancing. Okay. So that's about uh, casinos. And then another uh, confirmatory point of casinos in South. Blue is discolorations of sclera in children. Actually, it is a symptom of osteogenesis imperfecta. Okay. But still, it is the blue is discolorations of the sclera. When we are looking to the eye, we can see a bluish spot around the cornea that, that means in the sclera okay and the passionate love to children i already said about the fond of love and nature love music and dancing that is a romantic person and passionate love to children okay and the next one the complaints after taking responsibilities during anger age group anger age group okay that i already discussed about parental dominations and etc taking responsibilities during anger age. That means suppression, lot of suppressions will be there. And the moles in crops, a cafeless spot. If a patient is saying uh, that uh, I had developed new moles in my skin, that means the psychosophilitic miasm is the dominant in him. That means the carnosin is he. Okay. And next indication, hereditary cirrhosis, anemia and the maternal side carcinoma, the cancer. If you are taking the family history, if there is a malignant affections or the cancer history, that is a confirmatory point towards the carcinosin. Why? Because the cancer myasm or the psychosophilitic myasm is predominant in that family. And then that's one destructive symptom, the tearing the skin around the nail, tearing the skin around the nail. That is a syphilitic one, not biting the nail. That is a symptom of medorinum. 
here here in the skin around the nails that's about the carcinosin okay so that's about the carcinosin i talked about uh, it's uh, how it, the pathogenesis is developing that is the suppression and the identification points like blue discolorations around sclera and uh, kafilo spot moles in crops and uh, malignant history in the maternal side especially in the maternal side okay that's about uh, carcinosin uh, now we can move to sifilinum that is uh, from the name itself it is an uh, representative of a syphilitic miasm okay in sifilinum that is aversion to every dirtiness especially of the hands and always washing the hands even the sifilinum patient has the as fear to give shake hand because of that kind of contamination the sifilinum okay and the recent memory lost but active remote memory okay recent memory loss but uh, active remote memory and when looking to the teeth you can see a spotted discolorations on teeth and washing under clothes frequently that kind of obsession and the extreme is their obsession under clothes and frequently dreams of his own disease dreams of his own disease and just is no expressions on the face why because syphilitic one destructive syphilitic miasma means a destructive okay so that's about the syphilinum and history of abortion abortion means what is the end of a species that means a syphilitic miasma so if you get and the history of abortion in a patient that saying the nature saying that that lady is a syphilitic has a syphilitic pain so it's very cruel if you are not prescribing syphilinum to that lady if you are giving syphilitum to that lady it means you are saving that uh, that family from from the happening of the more abortions okay that's a syphilitic if the syphilitic miasm is predominant the next will also get aborted but if you give an syphilinum one um the abortion uh, the tendency to abortion will be removed that's only how my pedic remedy can do that okay so that's about and chronic uh, of thalamic pathologies that is all the chronic eye pathologies all or the astigmatism or the retinal detachment or any chronic of thalamic pathologies is coming under syphilitic miasm so syphilinum can be coming into action in the case of chronic ophthalmopathic uh, diseases okay and the identification clues physical identification clues and deep longitudinal crack along the center of the tongue while examining the tongue we have different kind of tongues are there deep longitudinal crack along the center of the tongue okay and nails are distorted why syphilitic patient destructive one so nails are distorted remember this in syphilinum nails are distorted that means in shape shapes are lost shapes may be lost or broken or that means uh, what to say everything distorted okay and hereditary illness and especially uh, all the uh, conditions like the graves condition grievous diseases may be happened in every in their family hereditary illness that means a syphilitic miasm is transferring and striking himself striking himself and alcoholism and anti social these are about all are the identification points of the syphilinum okay and the next to one one of the important one that is medorinum is a, we we all are aware about uh, psychotic miasm very well and the medorinum is the best example to study the medorinum okay i'm not going to deep to medorinum because uh, still two hours or three hours we can talk about medorinum okay but i'm going to only the identification points of the medorinum that's our topic today. okay children cruelty children cruelty not children towards the cruelty the children is cruel how for example if you are handling with the child case you when ask to the child once the, in the first two visit the child will be very talkative about his pet that his cat is name is that and i will play with the cat or i will play with the dog and he will be talkative about the pet so we have the rem- uh, memory that that child has a pet and is fond of pet and the next two visit while we are asked what about what happened to your pet his reply with, died so how it died i killed it okay so that's his response that is cruelty to animal or to throw stones to the dog 
or like uh, pulling the uh, wings of the insect and to watch the moving of the insect or kick the cat actually in a child what we expecting is a, some kind of fear to animal but if the medorinum is a child he don't have that kind of fear he always torture the uh, pet or the animal and uh, have a pleasure on it that is the cruelty towards animal okay that is children cruelty seen in children that is an identification for the medorinum child and next one extreme polarities that means the medorinum have the, the polarity that means extremes uh, that uh, that means once we can see that he is very expressive agony anger fear and everything is expressing and after few days when we are looking he say like a person is like very gloomy he is not expressing anything so we are oh this man has a personality disorder no actually he is like that medorinum is like that it is not a mood swing like we are seeing in uh, natrum or ignatia maximus cata or crocus it's not a mood swing the medorinum personality is like that it's a swing the extreme either very topper in the exam or get failed in the exam okay or the big biggest performer or the high performer in the team or or in the company or the loser in the company that is the both extremes that way the shankaran sir used the word pendulum like a pendulum extreme polarities alternating states just remember that identification point that is extreme remember it is not a mood swing it is not a mood swing they are like that sometimes very expressive sometimes very introverted sometimes they are not expressing anything but sometimes very express uh, sometimes expressing and very like phosphorus or like that sometimes like natromor but he is not natromor or pulsatra he is medorinum alternating state remember i am using i am uh, want to say again it is not the mood swing they are actually like that so that's about medorinum okay and uh, uh, this may, th this lady is a uh, is uh, her, her name is jolly and carolite you know very well about this J lord lady her name is jolly and in kodathai in so one of the uh, in the place in the district he is one what he did is very malicious she killed six people in her family her wife her husband her in-laws her cousin sister and with related and about six people and you know what's the peculiarity he started this killing in 2002 and it get discovered or get into the public domain only in the 2017 2018 that means after 16 years she killed all her uh, relatives by giving cyanides the, the the way of the killing look to the way of the killing one how she uh, how she concealed it how she escaped from the prosecution that is a psychotic look to her lip thick lip and uh, that's one of the identification that's why i use it identification points of the medorinum thick lip and eyebrow some kind of unibrow 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 is there for her so that's an identification point of medorinum and she is now under uh, persecutions uh, in kerala she is under uh, is imprisonment now is a famous case in kerala notorious case in kerala kodathai joli okay so is medor in the maliciousness and uh, another another person look to this person his name is suraj and that's his wife uttra can you know what he did is that he killed his wife by a poisonous snake he tried it three times two times that lady escaped miraculously but but he didn't give up he put a poisonous a poisonous snake into the bedroom and allowed to bite his wife look to the intensity of the malicious and look to his lip to thick lip the nature is saying that the medorinum or the psychotic miasm is the and for killing there are many plenty of options are there for a criminal we are we are witnessing daily in um, all the printer media 
witnessing it that where is kind of the what is a cold blooded murder but what jolly the kurathai jolly and this uh, suraj did is the maliciousness why because they are metorinum because there is the psychotic tendencies more predominant in them look how beautifully explained our mayasam even centuries before by our masters hanuman and our other masters that's the beauty of our mayasam even still it's uh, uh, existing its importance the mayasam and i can predict this uh, uh, jolly may get suicide may try to will try to get suicide why because the next mayasam is syphilitic if we shifted to syphilitic mayasam from psychotic definitely she will get suicide and uh, uh, she she tried once in the jail too okay so that look to the uh, I, i'm not uh, asking I, i'm not uh, what to say is that i'm i want to clear about the idea of the mayasam how truthfully mayasam is occurring in the nature that's why i u- that's that that's why i use these cases okay so that's about the metorinum and the other identification points of uh, metorinum biting nail this is saurav ganguly the captain of indian cricket team has always the tendency to the biting nail that is an identification point of metorinum okay in carcinosin i already said it is the skin tearing around skin around the nail that is carcinosin identification point here the biting the nail and the procrastination postpone everything for tomorrow and another remedy how same this procrastination that is lycopodium but in lycopodium it is due to a lack of self confidence like that but in uh, medorinum it is due to a uh, that you know uh, what to know because of that hurriedness procrastination and the workaholic is a very workaholic medorinum and the learning disability dyslexia especially men, when while making spelling mistake while making spelling mistake that is a f- uh, field of medorinum and hurried speech hurriedness like uh, medicines like bryony and hepasal they are where they have hurried speech okay and uh, another concomitant symptoms are forgetfulness is an important concomitant symptom in medorinum and serrated teeth if you are seeing serrated teeth in child that's uh, that's like we are seen in, in the picture that is an identification point of medorinum thick lip that i Uh, described about uh, jolly and uh, suraj that malicious people thickly and unibro if the eyebrows are joined actually this is a psychotic symptom if you are seen in the unibro or a joined eyebrow it means that it is an identification towards the metorina and nail depressed as if bent a depressed as if bent in syphilinum we have said the nails are distorted in shape in metorina nail dip- rested as in bed okay and better after a short sleep like nexomic and phosphoric acid after a short sleep better after a short sleep and hair on unusual part some people have hair on uh, shoulder or the back or some point of back like uh, some area extra somatic growth if you that means what it's a psychotic feature so even hair on unusual part that is a uh, identification point towards medorinum okay so that's about the medorinum identification points now we are moving to sorinum and another remedy and here the despair from itching we know that the, the sorinum is preparing from the itch particle okay and the fear of poverty though he is well to do her business will be very uh, marvelously going but he has always the fear that oh my oh, whether I, my business go to a failure or i'm going to be a poor that means at the pessimism is there that is the apt to word to describe sorinum two words are enough to describe sorinum the sense of incapacity and the pessimism that is have to always have the struggle of the survival they always have the fear of of getting failed in the business failed in the law failed in the life or getting failed in everything there is as no optimism not optimism even in a slight degree he is the straight mark of the pessimism that's the sorinum okay and child good plays all the day all the day child is very good 
but troublesome and screaming all the night. Okay, all the night like Jalapa and the opposite is like Opodi. Okay, child could play all the day and troublesome and screaming all the night. That's about the Sorinum point. Okay, and another points about uh, uh, identification points about uh, Medorinum. The eruptions behind the ear with intolerable itching. Identify the position ear for Sorinum ear with intolerable itching. And vitiligo start from the scalp and even the hair become white. Vitiligo start from the and hair become white or the vitiligo. Okay. And the dysmenorrhea. We have a different medicine for dysmenorrhea. But here, dysmenorrhea near climax is which is very uh, uncommon. The dysmenorrhea during uh, the early period of uh, reproductive age period is common. But here, dysmenorrhea near climax is that is very peculiar. And the medicine is sorinum. And while taking the family history of strong psoriasis and eczema, in carcinosin, we are seen that a family history of the malignant disease. In syphilinum, we are seen that there is kind of many hereditary diseases. And in, so, in sorinum, the family history of psoriasis or eczema. And obstinate cases of bedwetting and constipation. We have enough remedy for bedwetting like calcarea cup, like sepia, creosote, plendago, belladonna, restox. These are very much effective in bed wetting or the nocturnal enuresis. But if all these remedies are failed to control the bed wetting, think about the sorinum and also the constipation. We have enough remedies like lactofloratum, opium, tarandula, hispana, senna, cascara. We have a plenty of medicine, alumina, plenty of the medicine for constipation. If all other remedies to fail to manage the constipation, think about the sorinum. That like what I said already, a miasmatic blog is there. So use in the obstinate cases of bed wetting or the constipation, use sorinum as a remedy. And now we can move to another, another important medicine, the tuberculinum. My sir, which sir always said, the tuberculinum is his wife and syphilinum is uh, his lover. That much for, uh, he was that much fond of with uh, tuberculinum and syphilinum because that much witnessed the action of these medicines. Even in the uh, genetic conditions like osteogenesis imperfecta and like that, with keyword, with the keyword documented cases. That's why we are that much uh, exciting about while we are saying about this kind of nozzles. When the tuberculinum is nature is very clear. Tuberculinum means what? It is a combination of soric miasm and the syphilitic miasm. The syphilitic miasm means what? It is a destructiveness. Soric means what? A mildness. So it's a changeability. The destructiveness alternating with mildness destructiveness alternating with mildness. The child always want to bite and throw things, intentional throw and biting. A problematic child. The tuberculinum child is like that. He, he don't like restriction. He don't like restriction. It's very impossible for him to obey an authority. That's why the tuberculinum is very much act, which is going to act, getting actions in uh, uh, problem, problem disorders like opposed deficient disorder, ADHD, and autism. They can't bear the authoritarian. They are, that means if, if the teenage, if, if they feel that their freedom is get restricted, they will explode. Their character will explode. That means the destructiveness, that, that saying that the person is the tubercula or the tuberculin remedy. Okay, always a destructiveness is there, like to want to bite and tear things, or always uh, for tuberculinum, sleep is the waste of the time. For the tubercular child, they don't want to sleep. They always want to play with uh, his choice, his choices, want to do something, the tubercular child. Skin allergy to milk, and excessive growth of fine. Please note this excessive growth of fine hair. While you're looking to the back of the back, back spine of the child, you can see fine growth. That is a confirmation point for tuberculinum or for the bacillinum too. Now, as a tubercular symptom, just remember, if you see excessive growth of fine hair on the back, that means that is 
uh, that is identification of sorin for symptoms change from one organ to another okay symptoms change from one organ to another okay and uh, the constantly changing symptoms the tubercular variety is that the changeability while it is the dress or the food or about the relationship everything or the job everything even ch is changeable he is not static one job for three weeks then resign and get into another field but they want change always they want to explore the nature helps for the nature okay and very hyperactive and always discontented always discontented is a tubercular feature and another identification point if the patient have the frequent cold the bronchitis asthma and pneumonia and it is an identification point of tuberculinum okay we said if have the history of the cancer that is calcinosin if the history of the hereditary illness that is uh, syphilinum if there is history of the psoriasis and eczema that is an identification point of sorinum here we are saying not about the family history but about the past history of the patient if the patient have frequent cold bronchitis asthma and pneumonia that means something related with lung and upper respiratory tract infection which is confirming that the patient is tubercular or the tuberculin okay and this have the fear of the dog or animal especially fear of the dog but it is not a confirmatory because in some tuberculin tubercular patients have fond of animals because they love pets but commonly the tuberculinum have fear of the dogs and animal and another physical identification point please just remember this this all uh, very often help to prescribe okay their long eyelashes silky hair as simply the dress and style often exhibit a romantic and poetic sensitivity that means by looking is a very graceful that look to this picture this is hina rabani the former foreign minister of pakistan look this is a tubercular look to her uh, hair silky hair look to the eyelashes that is a long eyelashes simply a beautiful thing the tubercular means beauty and is another synonym of the beauty if you have no case with no symptoms just look to the patient and there is a very long eyelashes and silky hair and by looking the case you feel that the patient has a tubercular thin or the tubercular history or the tubercular miasm just close your eyes and prescribe tuberculinum definitely act because the homeopathy is the nature of this is the science of the nature the natural science definitely act okay so another identification point the worst form of headaches when other remedy failed we already said about the worst form of uh, um bed wetting and constipation in the case of sorinum here the worst form of the headache when other remedy fail we have plenty of the medicine for headache like iris vesicularis scutellaria melisa asnea barbareta and sanguinaria if all these remedies fail think about tuberculinum to remove that blockage okay and stubborn cases of fever if you are uh, we tried all the fever remedy and the fever is still stubborn like puo pyrexia of unknown origin just give tuberculinum or pyrogen pyrogen is also a nozzle you will come into it okay stubborn case of the fever think about tuberculinum and the perspiration on nose that's an identification point perspiration on the nose okay identification that's about uh, tuberculinum okay and uh, i want to give another uh, caution never give tuberculinum when there is massive heart pathology especially in children okay this is a caution just remember in a, if a child have a severe patho cardiac pathology never prescribe tuberculinum okay so that's about tuberculinum and the next remedy and uh, another friend of tuberculinum that is bacillinum i don't know what is the role of bacillinum in the rest of the world in kerala what we did cruelly is that uh, we are reserved bacillinum for only for tinea that is very unfortunate actually the bacillinum is uh, a major remedy than tuberculinum but we people are restricted bacillinum for only for tinea 
We think about Bell's syndrome only for tinea. Tinea, that means a ringworm infection. But it is not like that. Bacillinum is a wonderful remedy. We can look into identification points. The quick answers and quick reactions in children. Quick answer, that means like Ignatia child. The quick answer and quick reactions. And physically, a small face with protruded malar bone. Malar bone is protruded. Natron cap also have this feature, the prominent malar bone. So in Bacillinum, a small face with protruded malar bone. Okay, and it's very hectic. Hectic, hectic. In tuberculinum, I said the changeability and the discontented is the feature of the tuberculinum. In bacillinum, hecticness is the keynote of the bacillinum. He always thinks, I want to do this or I want to do that. The time is too short. I want to do more things. This is always in the mind of the bacillinum personality. Very hectic. While looking to the teeth, you can see the yellow discoloration of the teeth. Yellow discoloration is on teeth. That's an identification point. If you see a yellow discoloration of teeth, just start with basilinum. Enough, it may act. Okay, and another uh, identification points of uh, basilinum, the sleep as soon as the journey starts. There's a common symptom in child, right? Okay, but anyway, if a child, uh, child have the tendency to always saying, oh, go outside, go outside. So when entering to the uh, vehicle, they get sleep. As soon as the wind is, Blowing on their face, they get sleep. That is an identification point of bacillinum. Sleep as soon as the journey starts. Okay. And eczema around the eye. I want to ask a question. Eczema around the ear. Which was that remedy? That was sorinum. Ear. Sorinum. Eye. Bacillinum. Look how beautiful our material medica is. Okay. And if the history of the lots of wards. Okay. We have the tendency to think about uh, tuja if the patient has a lot of what but if the patient has a history of lot of what also think about tuberculinum into action in in your thought okay and children start hitting their head it's a common thing when they get angry some children have the tendency to hit their head on the wall that's a feature of the bacillinum in civilinum also i said about they have the striking that is the destructiveness in here, bacillium 2, it's a tubercular. That means a small part of syphilis is there. Some kind of destructions will be there, but mixed with some kind of sora. That's the beauty of tuberculinum and bacillinum, right? Okay, so if the children start hitting their head to the wall or to the floor, that means that is a bacillinum child. Okay, and but we can look to the identification clues of bacillinum. A shiny nails in medorinum I said nail is bent. In syphilinum, I said nail is distorted. In bacillinum, nails are shiny, shiny looking nails. It's like oily appearance. And hairy back, back on the hair. In tuberculinum, two that have hair. If the back is hairy, think of two medicine, either tuberculinum or bacillinum. But confirm the possibility of a tubercular myasm okay and history of the recurrent worm and history of the tb that confirm the bacillinum and irritable snappish and uncivil children and here and fear of the black dog in tuberculinum i said fear of dogs and animal and bacillinum too they have the fear of the dog especially black dogs okay so that's about about bacillinum. Now we can move to another snowsuit that is lysinum. We know from where we are preparing lysinum. That is from the saliva of the rabbit dog. Okay. Some patients have the tendency to a spasmodic spitting. Spitting or while he is walking, spit, spitting to the street. That is a third person report complaint. Okay. It is spasmodic spitting. That is a lysin symptom. And difficulty in swallowing difficulty in dysphagia, it's a hydrophobic symptom, and aversion to cohesion since delivery. Okay, so just remember this symptom, spasmodic spitting and aversion to cohesion since delivery. Okay, and uh, another important symptom, in bacillinum, I said, the child has a tendency to strike the head. Okay, in the lysinum, another important symptom, often bite to show their anger. The child has the tendency to bite or bite the mother, or bite the brother, or bite to, the, to them, 
who irritate him who irritate him definitely he will bite okay so often bite to show there okay so if the child has a tendency to bite lies in him if the child has tendency to strike his head on the floor that is basilinum remember this this will help in the definitely in the different cases whatever may be the diagnosis whatever may be the symptom totality if your patient has this kind of symptom it's saying that nature saying that this child is basilinum or this saying this child is lysinum it is our duty to spot this child has the symptom and this is a confirmation point of tuberculinum or basilinum okay so that's about uh, about like okay and valuable remedy in uterine prolapse okay just remember about the valuable remedy in uh, uterine prolapse that's about lysine and now we can move to another remedy that is uh, ambragrisia we know the ambragrisia where the ambragrisia is preparing it is from the morbid uh, stomach content of the sperm whale in ambragrisia that is the auditory hallucination as if ticks of watches as if ticks of watches the auditory hallucination and embarrassed face we can come to that and formic sensation in the thyroid gland <clears throat> ambragrisia is a wonderful remedy for thyroid complaint especially like hashimoto's thyroiditis and other thyroid complaint why the ambragrisia is a psychotic remedy that kind of uh, suppression is there in ambragrisia so okay and the auditory hallucination and if the formication sensation in the thyroid gland that is an indication of ambragrisia okay and we can come to uh, what is the pathogenesis of the ambragrisia that is a sense of embarrassment how this embarrassment happened in the ambragrisia you know why the ambragrisia have a feeling that is a feeling of shit feeling i'm not good i'm not good to look i'm not good to go to public i'm not good in studies i'm not good in business i have so many weakness i have a shit feeling so what will she do she know that i am very uh, um very uh, i'm very ugly so what she will do she think i want to cover up all my weakness for what if i get exposed i get forsaken from my beloved ones so her motive is to cover up all the weakness we we are very familiar about one of the symptoms of ambragrisia that is a sense of a tremendous shyness in the presence of others how this symptom develop look how homeopathy uh, material medica is beautiful how this tremendous shyness develop because of this sense of embarrassment i am not good i am not going to appear i am not good to appear in the public that causes tremendous shyness in the company or in the presence of strangers the bareta cup also have this tremendous shyness in the strangers but the pathogenesis of the bareta cup and ambragrisia is different in bareta cup is that is an incapability that is an inborn error genetic error but in ambragrisia it's an acute feeling she is not like that actually she don't have that incapability like bareta cup but she thinks so is an acute feeling look uh, this is the way to differentiate the remedy just forget about the diagnosis of the disease about the symptom totality if you are unable to diagnose the state of the patient or the state of the mental pathology it's very easy to prescribe the remedy so that's about the ambragrisia a sense of embarrassment and another remedy very close to ambragrisia is the lacaninum lacaninum is not a nosot actually lacaninum is a sarcot that's from the dog's milk in lacaninum also there is a dirty feeling but the pathogenesis is different how the lacaninum pathogenesis develop the in lacaninum this lack the lack of self esteem self worth aroused after a cruel comparison with other people let me to explain for example in a family there are two child one child is very good smart in studies and another is not good in studies so what will going to happen in that family the parents are used to reprimand this child or curse this chi child by saying oh, you look to that child look your sister how good she is 
how poor you you are this is the common terms or the common points every time she heard what causes this causes an embarrassment this result in the lack of self worth so in lacaninum there is a person responsible for that lack of self esteem but in ambragrisia it is the self erosal is a self eliciting one in lacaninum there is a person responsible for that patient state that re, uh, that is revenge or that hate hatred for that person will be there in lacaninum i think it's clear lacaninum and ambragrisia is clear dear friends always try to understand medicine like this don't go to uh, by heart all the symptoms of this medicines instead just to try to understand what the pathogenesis is help to help to diagnose the remedy okay so that's about uh, ambragris yeah and next one the pyrogen okay in pyrogen we know we are using the pyro we know it's a septic origin while uh, the whispering herself while narrating the symptom there is a whispering narrating the symptom while the narrating uh, we can feel that oh who is whispering same patient is there that is the pyrogen and pain right shoulder while coughing okay and this is uh, this is the most identification point of the pyrogen this pyrogen child can think and talk faster than ever before especially during fever that means actually what happen we are expecting child become lethargic or weak by a fever or a get a viral infection but in pyrogen what happened the child get very energetic and get talkative and singing song and dancing and always very exciting during fever we may think what happened to this child but what the homeopathic nature is saying is a confirmation point towards the pyrogen a sense of well being even with high temperature a sense of well being even with high temperature that means that is the confirmatory point of pyrogen okay so okay, in uh, in earlier i uh, told about a stubborn case of the fever you can select pyrogen if pyrogen fail you can use tuberculinum okay and the next one influenzinum i am not going to the symptomatology of the influenzinum instead i am i want to say one symptom that is get unnoticed that is obesity in children from early thyroid dysfunction obesity in the children from early thyroid dysfunctions okay think about influenzinum okay and now the variolinum actually we are using variolinum for uh, as a preventive for uh, chicken pox or as a medicine but i am not going to say about that variolinum actions on chicken pox instead i want to say one thing a calcaneus deposit on spinal cord remember on spinal cord not on the vertebra if a pathology is the developed is a calcaneus deposit on spinal cord the variolinum may come into play okay so in cervical spondylosis or lumbar disc prolapse if all other remedy fail like calcarea cab asal um, calcarea cab acid for sore cilicia or lactanandus they are the medicine for cervical spondylosis if it get fail think about variolinum and lumbar disc prolapse the backache and even in the chicken pox if the patient has the concomitant as backache the variolinum is a sure remedy no doubt guaranteed you can close your eyes and prescribe okay so remember in variolinum cervical spondylosis and lumbar disc prolapse okay and next one the parotidinum we know from where we are preparing the parotidinum in a progressive muscular dystrophy to reduce the cpkmb okay we know that in progressive muscular dystrophy like uh, or duquesne muscular dystrophy while we are uh, looking to the blood parameter we be increased cpkmb so to reduce the cpkmb we can use the parotidinum okay and this is the experience uh, it is a experience from dr s g biju okay and it is well known from the carcinoma of the head of the pancreas and useful in azoospermia it is a in wonderful remedy in the in managing infertility okay we know that if get mums there is chance to affect the metastasis to the testes okay if it happen the parotidinum is useful in azoospermia okay and another remedy is the staphylococcinum we know what is staphylococcinum okay impetigo contagiosa that is um, that is one of the disease that uh, uh, that is amenable to staphylococcinum okay and diarrhea after decayed food in kerala there is an arabian food known as shawarma 
I don't know whether all are familiar about it. Shawarma is actually Arabian food. Actually, it is a decayed meat. Even that recently uh, in Kerala, death has occurred in Calicut district. Uh, one child get died from food poisoning by eating the shawarma. If it is diarrhea from shawarma of after decayed food, staphylococcin is coming into action. Always remember a decayed meat or decayed or putrid meat or contaminated meat. That is the role of staphylococcin. Okay. And if the skin have any suppurative pathology, remember, if you are taking a case and you are seeing a suppuration is there, that is an identification towards staphylococcinum. And recurrent pus is the key point. Recurrent pus is the key point of the staphylococcin. Okay. And the next one is the streptococcinum. If the patient ASO is high, we are usually using stellaria media for increased ASO titer. Also use, uh, we can use streptococcinum, the rheumatic fever. Okay, the rheumatic fever pathology. Okay, and in uh, streptococcinum, the identification points are recurrent throat infections or boil. Recurrent throat infections or boil. And also in septic fever or in a, any septic state when pyrogen fails. Your, about, we are discussed about stubborn fever. If pyrogen fails, we think about tuberculinum. And also, if pyrogen fail, we can think about streptococcinum. And even in post-viral arthritis. Okay, I, I just want to share with you something. And streptococcin is very much uh, effective in the case of osteoarthritis. Is the pathology, is the symptomatology same as that of Rustox? If you didn't get any result with the Rustox of your patient, just try streptococcin 200 in your patient and see the result. Okay, and the entry point of the streptococcus is streptococcinum is that three points. Okay, if the patient has the involvement of the throat, heart, and the joints, if the patient has symptoms of the throat and the cardiac, or the heart, and the joint, it is a confirmation points towards the streptococcin. And you can also get another clue. You just ask about the maternal history or the, uh, the um, pregnancy history. If there is recurrent infections in the in during pregnancy for mother, that is an indication of streptococcin for child. If the mother has recurrent infections during the pregnancy, that is a confirmation point for the streptococcin. Okay, so what are the entry point of streptococcin? If the symptoms have this triad, throat, heart, and joint, and the one of the confirmation is that if the mother has frequent infections during pregnancy. Okay, that's about streptococcin. And next one, the malaria no sort. And another symptom that is refused to eat because he believes that eating will cause illness. That's a strange symptom. That is, uh, there are people or especially girls and ladies that they, they refuse to eat because they fear that they put weight. For that, they avoid eating. Not like that. Here, they refuse to eat because he believes that eating will cause illness. That's an indication of malaria nosod. And also, another point of malaria nosod is that should be thought in worst cases of chikungunya and dengue fever when associated with rheumatism. And the, uh, the few years ago, the Kerala have the epidemic of both chikungunya and dengue, and the homeopaths are brilliantly managed, managed both dengue fever and chikungunya in Kerala, and that are well documented in Kerala too. Okay, so in case of we have medicines like uh, upatorium, like upatorium and rustox and X-ray, like medicines are there, but in a worst cases of chikungunya and dengue, when associated with rheumatism we can think about malaria no sort okay and another symptom is i feels heavy and burn like fire i feels heavy and burn like fire that's the exact symptoms of eupatorium okay and next one the malandrinum okay malandrinum is the racco to remove the ragots in the ulcer that that kind of a pyogenic presentation and it's clear the remnants of the cancerous deposit remnants to clear and also to prevent the metastasis in the malignant cases, we can give malandrinum 200, 200 to that patient. And also, uh, you may use the prophylaxis for chickenpox. 
in kerala we are using the malandrinum as a better preventive for chickenpox than the rex tox or variolinum and pulsatilla the malandrinum malandrinum is highly effective as a prophylactic remedy for chickenpox than rex tox and pulsatilla okay so that's about the malandrinum and the next remedy that is aviare 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 teti is like tuberculinum and the aviare some patients some especially some children have the tendency to develop recurrent respiratory infections they get three or four infections every month three or four infections every month to remove that dyscrasia use aviare teti aviare teti recurrent respiratory infections and you can also if the child has a recurrent respiratory infection three medicines are coming into play one is aviare another one is asidate and thymus asidate 6x and thymus vulgaris 30 okay but uh, dr bijesh sir is used to say that the asal as iodide is not that much uh, effective in coastal area in our uh, kerala there are many coastal areas are there the as iodide is not that much effective in the coastal area so we will shift to to uh, thymus vulgaris or avera 30 okay so if the patient has a recurrent child has a recurrent respiratory infection think about these three remedy avera 30 thymus vulgaris 30 and asidated 6x okay so and this avera 30 follows asidated and thymus well and you can uh, clear the this tendency or you can uh, you can save the patient from getting recurrent respiratory infections that's about the avera and the next one is the epihysterinum the epihysterinum means that's a remedy that is preparing from the fibroid tumor the uterine fibroid okay so you should think of this remedy when your well selected remedy fails in fibroid endometriosis or the malignant sufferings of the uterus okay if your well well selected remedy fail you can think about happy history now also if your patient have severe hemorrhage from the fibroid growth actually the medicine is a trillium pendulum if the severe hemorrhage from the fibroid trillium is a medicine if the trillium is not acting you can think about epihysterinum so just remember epihysterinum action is on the fibro on the uterus ha huh? in the case of the fibroid or in the endometriosis or the malignant affections of the uterus when you are well selected remedy fail to act okay and next one is the b coli b coli and b coli 200 we are used to remove the recurrent uti remember b coli is not the medicine for urinary tract infection we have plenty of the medicines like mercocor uh, cantharis sarsaparilla berberis vulgaris and uh, uh, equisetum there are many medicines for urinary tract infection uh, uva uci uti but if some ladies have the tendency like we are said about the children if children have the tendency to develop recurrent respect at infection some ladies have the tendency to develop recurrent uti okay this bicoli will definitely prevent the tendency to develop recurrent uti okay so that's about the bicoli 200 okay and enterococcinum okay enterococcinum and just remember that is action is on uh, uh, intestine if the patient has the emotional diarrhea especially in irritable bowel syndrome ulcerative colitis and proctitis it is exactly similar to a bowel nosod that is known as psychotic compound i will talk about psychotic compound enterococcinum is somewhat related to psychotic compound okay so then the hypozeinum hypozeinum okay this is known as the anti tart of old age why because we know about the symptoms of anti tart that much accumulations of the mucus in the lungs and as if much would expectorated but nothing comes up okay we are using the medicines like uh, senega or eridiction uh, to remove that uh, phlegm okay but if it is an old age remember hypozeinum that is a better remedy than senega and redictione in old age just remember this and it out of old age which is that remedy hypozeinum okay and uh, another one this uh, dysentric compound i i, I, just, I think uh, you know, while saying enterococcinum i use the word psychotic compound no it is dysentric compound dysentric compound it's actually it is a bowel nosor it is a better remedy for irritable bowel syndrome and morning diarrhea i have a clue just forget about all other symptoms of the dysentery compound only remember one thing if 
any of the mental strain any of the mental strain aggravated the symptoms of the digestive tract that is the action of the dysentric compound whether it is irritable bowel syndrome or irritable bowel disorder like ulcerative colitis crohn's disease proctitis or enterocolitis or enteritis whatever it may be if a mental strain is aggravating the digestive tract symptom think about the dysentery compound the bowel nosor it's an action definitely it will get act it is uh, closely resembling with enterococcinum that we discussed earlier the morning diarrhea and irritable and all the I ibs irritable bowel syndrome okay i repeat just remember one symptom in dysentery compound any of the mental strain whether it is anticipation anxiety grief worries or anything if it aggravate the digestive symptom tract that is the confirmatory point of dysentery compound okay and the last one the serum that is the carcinoma of the breast liver and colon and the lancinating pain of the cancer okay just forget about the symptomatology of the serum we had discussed the carcinosin in very detail if you have a case and uh, you get a resemblance that the patient is somewhat like of carcinosin but the nature of the tumor is very hard and have the sim stomach symptoms of sulfur that means hollowness or emptiness in the abdomen with history of the worms it is a confirmatory point of serinum not carcinosin the serinum is the remedy for that patient i repeat exactly all the symptoms that of the carcinosin plus the tumor is harder or the calcification is there with stomach symptoms of the sulfur with history of the worms okay and talking about the uh, adaptability of the serinum in the malignant condition we are not only using the serinum in malignant affections we are also using serinum in worm complaint if osina or to cream are failed in cases okay so if your malignant patient have a history of the worms has the symptoms of the sulfur has hollowness or emptiness in the abdomen with the hard tumor and the features of the carcinosin definitely that is the serinum patient prescribe serinum with full confidence it will get some relief okay that's about the nosor i think it's a very short time to explain i know that i am very uh, speed uh, i am very explain this very speed but uh, just to forgive me uh, i want to share more points uh, with this short time that's why uh, i used to, to speak in very uh, speed okay uh, i think that's about the serinum uh, and about the nosors and all i explained uh, it was about uh, that the knowledge that i conceived from dr sg biju and i think it's uh, beneficial for you and uh, dr kathik sir it's the, thank you so much for giving the opportunity uh, for a talk kathik sir please uh, dr wahab it was uh, such an amazing lecture amazing uh, one and a half hours i just didn't know this we we spent one and a half hours on this subject <laughs> <laughs> you you kept us uh, you know so uh, uh, stuck to the screen that we were just absorbing everything that you were saying. Uh, so uh, it's amazing. So I'm uh, now asking people from the attendees uh, or the attendees if you have anything to ask Dr. Wahab, uh, you know, from his talk. Uh, you can you can just type it in in the box, and I'm going to share that uh, so that everybody can see what you've asked for. And, uh, uh, sir, there's one remedy. One question was, what was the remedy when you mentioned you used for COVID-19? Uh, in India, actually, we are not treating the COVID. In Kerala, we not have any permissions to treat COVID, but yeah. we are, here we are using uh, medicine asal asal 30. and we are using the term in, uh, immune booster instead of prophylaxis and uh, another another part of the states they are treating the covid uh, with homeopathic medicine like medicines like uh, belladonna and phosphorus and bryonias as coming into um, play and uh, another about the asal uh, in about uh, uh, asal why i am saying about asal asenical asenical okay right. 
and uh, one thing i have to share is that uh, with, uh, in kerala we had conducted a study about uh, asal about uh, its immune modulations and uh, we are uh, ex uh, exper um, experimented in 15 patient and what it found that after giving asal the the patients immune modulators like cd4 cd8 and its ratios are increased that means the asal have the power to modulate our immunity okay and we know that it's a very primitive study and we have to continue on we hope uh, we will do best in the coming eras that is a very good uh, study doctor i i i saw that study it's uh, it's an excellent study that you've done on our self uh there's one more uh any experience vishaka is asking any experience with herpes no sods herpes no sod means which is the doctor whether they are using uh, variolinum uh yeah i i mean uh, i don't think there is a herpes no sod as it is available uh, in the market uh, yes 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 i i don't know i, I think uh, sure. they may be asking about variolinum okay variolinum okay right. the, the variolinum I, i i described it as a variolinum the variolinum is uh, we are usually uh, giving as a prophylactic and also for the medicine for the chicken pox but uh, the exact uh, the unexploited area of the variolinum is the back cake okay in the uh, especially cervical disc prol um, cervical spondylosis or lumbar disc prolapse okay if any of all of you better remedy failed in cervical spondylosis or uh, in um, lumbar disc prolapse you can think about the variolinum and also if your chickenpox patient have a concomitant as back cake the variolinum is a sure shot uh there is one more uh which potency of hypozanium for old age chest width 200 200 200 hypozanium 200 other bowel no so the experience uh, 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 i don't know uh, oh Uh, is yeah. an actually it's an another topic is a bowel nose yeah. and uh, I, i don't have much experience with bowel nose but uh, libinjob libinjob is my friend i, I can promise <laughs> I that uh, uh, i will uh, come in to with you with uh, the experience of bowel nose and after two or three years because um, i want to exploit it now uh, I, i don't have much experience but uh, dr biju sir and the sahya is using the dysentery compound that i mentioned in our uh, module the dysentery right. compound that is very much ex, uh, useful in controlling uh, emotional diarrhea or irritable bowel disorder or irritable syndromes or irritable other disease like ulcerative colitis proctitis okay only the uh, symptom you have to notice is that if the mental etiology if any mental strain that means any anticipation anxiety grief worry or whatever it may be if any mental strain is aggravating the digestive symptom that is a confirmation point of the dysentery compound okay so use that okay that's about i know only about the bowel nose sort and i have only running knowledge about it and chlamydia wise metorinum i don't know what's there chlamydia uh, i don't whether you uh, asking about its efficacy in gonorrhea uh, kartik sir i didn't get what they are uh, chlamydia wise metorinum no i think she wants to compare the two remedies Clim I, I don't one? know about the chlamydia. I don't know about. I, I know. I don't know about. Okay, this is uh, something which is interesting. What is the potency would you you would generally use? <laughs> Then use with no sir. Okay, and this is the main question that we are always uh, facing. Okay, just remember the potency is, uh, and especially if uh, I all in in, uh, in the beginning I said about uh, uh, to rem to remove the blockage in a case that means to case the intercurrent. okay in that case the better potency is the one num the cephalinum one num or tuberculinum one num or medorinum one num okay and in also if our case symptom totality is much resemblance to the remedy like for example if i had uh, narrated how the carcinos in patient is like that if that kind of uh, 60 or 70 percentages of symptoms are present in uh, your patient you can use one num okay if uh, is not that much kind of similarity to the person you can use the 200 because the 200 potency is the best potency to watch the action of the medicine okay if you didn't get an action after two week 
or uh, one month, you can increase the potency. Okay, and then about the repetition, there is no need to repeat frequently. Okay, just take uh, at least two weeks to repeat the medicine if you didn't get the action. If you get an action, just put on it, put on the SL and wait for one month. Okay, the one M is enough. The nozzles are enough. Just remember our nozzles are noxious substances. If it get acted, that one M one dose is enough. If that nozzle is not your patient's remedy, there is no use by repeating it very frequently. It's only wasting the time. Okay, so just remember one thing, just look to the totality of the case of the patient and um, have a resemblance and look to the uh, intensity of the resemblance with the medicine. If it is high, use potencies like high potency like one num. If it is not, it's only a just uh, uh, some clues are there, use 200 potency to watch the action of the medicine. Uh, this is the next question. Could you mention no swords made from pituitary? Uh, no, you... no, doctor. Uh, it's not only. Uh, it's not a no sword. It's a sarcode. It's not. It's, it's not no, uh, it's no sword. Sarcode. Yes, it's a sarcode. It's not no sword. <laughs> okay, so Doctor Libin again wants to ask: Can we start with no swords? Which means. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. You, Why yeah. not? Oh, well, yeah, no, I, I got it. Yeah, definitely. We can start with nozzle. If you have a, if I just, uh, if you are treating for a uh, problematic child, if you have a dis, uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or autism, and while taking the case, we get all the picture of the tuberculinum, like uh, as a problematic child, and is a changeability is there, and the destructiveness is there, and the long eyelashes is there, and silky hair is there, and end or the fear of dog is there. And if it is entirely fit to that case, tuberculum is that patient's remedy. So it's very cruel to prescribe another remedy for our sake or for our happiness. It's a cruel thing. Okay. If the patient is tuberculinum, just start tuberculinum. Nothing going to happen than a good thing. Uh, a picture I would like to know. Case of fissure on tongue. It given phosphorus. It's like okay, a case of fissure phosphorus. I, I don't know whether the patient is phosphorus or not. If the phosphorus, you're, if you're confident about the phosphorus, just stick on it. Either increase the potency. Or otherwise, uh, you can think about the Mexol or acid nitricum. Then go to cephalinum. Okay. The Mexo, the, it, it is good that you are uh, pointed, it is that syphilitic. We are not only have the syphilinum as syphilitic remedy, the Mexol and the acid nitricum also are coming under syphilitic myosin. For the crack in your tongue, I hope um, it's a deep crack. If it's so, use uh, before syphilinum, you can use the Mexol and acid nitricum. If it is not acting, go to syphilinum. How frequently can we repeat tuberculinum? Children, if symptoms, no, no, doctor, uh, the, the repetition is uh, the there is no hard and fast of all repetition. Just remember one thing if the, if the medicine is acted and if your patient is improving, there is no need to repeat the same medicine. Okay, just wait, your patient will recover. Okay, if your patient ha uh, has uh, no improvement, then you can repeat either the same dose of the medicine or you can increase the potency of the medicine okay don't be hesitate or don't be very feel very uh, rough and tough about the repetitions okay just go to the say uh, just look to the sake of the patient if the patient is on improving no need to repeat don't spoil the case just put, put on a cell and wait for it it will bring cure You said about a centric or which potency? 200, 200, 200, 200. 200. Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, there are people asking about uh, Sylvia. All our webinars are recorded. Uh, you can have a look at all our earlier webinars. Let me just type it out for you. You can have a look at it at ilovehomeopathy.com slash webinars and let me just type it out for you so ah uh, where is that yeah 
all our earlier webinars that you may have missed, you want to see it again, you want to go through this, this will also be up in a couple of days, so you can always go back and have a look at it. Uh, Libin, which, uh, sorry, uh, we go on to the next question, which book to refer for no swords? Oh, no. Okay, which book would refer to for Nozod? And uh, one thing that is the uh, first thing Dr. S. G. Biju uh, taught me is that is a better book uh, for us is our patient. Okay, so just concentrate on your patient and study for your patient is the better thing or the best thing to remember. Okay, if you are depending on the books, uh, it's for uh, it's like watching movies or uh, songs. Okay, because after a few weeks or a few months, it get volatile. Okay, but if you are reading for your patient, one of your patient, it will be there in your mind. Why we are remembering carcinogen or tuberculum or cephalinum that much? Because we are using for our patient. But why we are not much aware about the bowel nozzle? Because we have not used about in our life, even in the once in our lifetime, though we are studied in the college time. Okay, so always study for the patient. Always either it is a remedy or which is you're going to study a condition the best thing is to study for your patient that's a better thing okay uh, as your question is the nozod uh, i can uh, tell me uh, some books that uh, one book is that uh, by dr gaurang gaikwad that is a very good remedy that is the materia medica of nozods and sarcodes that Sarkos. is a very good book and uh, that is uh, another also books by Dr. Uh, Soul of, Soul of Remedies by Dr. Raju Shangaran. There's a brilliant explanations of uh, all important all sorts of the, okay. But in every book, whatever may be the book, the better thing is read it for your patient. If so, it will be in your mind forever. Otherwise, uh, it's get volatile. Uh, this is Janice Sina. What potency will you use for arsenic? Uh, the, this is what the government recommends. Oh, yeah, okay. okay, doctor, we are using a salb 30, one dose, and for, uh, one dose every day for a continuous three days. And we will repeat a salb 30 after one month. Okay, that's now the potency we are using. That's a, a proposal by the Indian uh, central, gov central government. Okay, so that's we are using in uh, every state. Uh, I think we'll stop at the last one. Uh, Shobha Vasa has asked how to give thyroidinum in thyroid patient. In thyroid patient, and if, thyroid. Uh, okay, thyroid patient, if the case is hypothyroidism, use thyroidinum one num. Okay, if the case is hyper uh, hypothyroidism, you can use, sorry, if your case is hypothyroidism, you can use thyroidinum 3x. If your patient is hyperthyroid, you can use thyroidinum one num. Okay, that's about one clue. Yes. Uh, any experience with insulinum? Uh, no, doctor. Insulin is a medicine. Insulin 6C is a very good for uh, diabetes mellitus. Insulin 6C by uh, one of our guru, Dr. Uh, uh, Mubarakji. But uh, personally, I'm not using insulin, but we, we have other remedies for diabetes mellitus. If you uh, want to use insulin, insulin, use 6C. Insulin 6C. 6C. Yeah, I think uh, this is what most of. Uh... For thyroid, yeah. I think you have answered all, all the questions. Could you list the books mentioned, please? Uh, Jan, I'll email you the list of books. I think the books are available in some of the sites. I'll email you separately on the list of books available for no sorts. Other remedies for DM? Diabetes mellitus, other important medicines are for like uh, Abroma Augusta. Abroma Augusta is a very good medicine. And uh, if your patients have any skin complaints, you can uh, use ZGM Jambalanam. If the diabetes with any other weakness, you can use acid force. If uh, the diabetes with important importance or any other uh, sexual dysfunction, you can use uh, Helonius or Coca or Moscus. And these are the specific remedies and, and also uh, cephalandra and gymnema silvestra. These are also coming into the actions of the diabetes mellitus. But, uh, 
this is only to manage but to cure uh, or to is a potentized medicine that uh, constitutional medicine like lycopodium lycopodium medorinum and carcinosin and natron sulf 6 12 x 12 x is the best potency to control these are the medis, remedies which are we are using there are enough remedies for i think uh, with this we'll uh, shut this session of the class i think it was an extremely informative webinar it's too short a time i know that it's just too short a time for such a beautiful subject we hope to have you once again with us maybe one or two no swords we can cover one or two no swords on uh, on another day what dr wahab definitely can definitely, we do that definitely yeah oh definitely, definitely. yes and uh, we'd also like to know how where we can contact you um do you have an email address if you can just tell me you can type it out yeah um, uh, my, my email id is yeah. abdul wahab cp at gmail.com okay i'm just going to type it out for you abdul yes, yes. B -A -H -A. abdul wahab cp C -P. yeah I, I will type i will type i will type Yeah, if there's anything you'd like to know, you can contact him. Uh, you can email him, abdulwahabcp at gmail.com. A B D U L V A H A B C P at gmail.com. And uh, so this is uh, this. With this, we come to an end of an excellent webinar. And I hope uh, there was a lot of things that you learned today. And uh, hopefully you'll start to get, start to use no swords in your daily practice. Uh, we've been encouraged now by Dr. Wahab to use no swords with the wonderful results he's got. Uh, I should also thank uh, Dr. Biju because um, Dr. Biju gives me one speaker every month. <laughs> so uh, if if you uh, if you want to know what kind of work he's been doing over the uh, over the months. This is an example. Dr. Wahab is an example of what Dr. Biju does at Sahia. So I encourage you to join the group, uh, follow them, um, follow their courses. Uh, they're also starting a, a research section of Sahia. So if any of you are interested to join them in research in any manner, whether you just like to learn about research, whether you'd like to participate or you'd just like to know how it's done, um, you can, you can, yeah, Sahia, does it have a website, doctor? Uh, I think yeah, they have a Facebook group. We have a, we have a, we have a website. FB page. Uh, we have yeah. a FB page in uh, that name is Sahia. Sahia, yes. You can join it. Sahia. Yes, you, you, you should join and maybe I will send out that link uh, that Dr. Uh, Biju shared with me where if you want to volunteer into the research group, you're interested just to know about it, you can just uh, fill up a form and uh, they will get back to you. And uh, yeah, so this is uh, so much about Sahia and uh, hats off to them. Uh, they're building a nice army of homeopaths who are going to go out and cure everybody in Kerala. <laughs> So, with this, I thank you, Dr. Wahab. I think Wahab. Thank you so much for the knowledge that you have shared with us. We hope to have you back uh, very soon with another two no swords, maybe, uh, especially. And uh, we will send you a feedback link. And uh, we we have been sending a few emails with the uh, with the feedback link. So. Kindly let us know how you liked our webinars, what you would like to see more, did you learn anything? Uh, or is there somebody you want us to host on the webinar? Uh, so we will talk to them and ask them to come and share their knowledge with us um, so that we can all uh, learn from their experience. So with this, I say goodbye to everybody. Goodbye, Dr. Wahab. Thank you so much once again. and. Uh, we hope to see you again, right? Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, everybody, for coming in. And we hope to see you next Wednesday and Thursday. Stay updated. 
we send out mails now to whoever is registered with us for the webinar. If you know a friend who wants to join these, uh, you can ask them to go to our website, www.ilovehomeopathy.com. Uh, ask them to just enter their name in, their, uh, in the webinar form, and uh, we will send them emails about our future webinars. So thank you so much once again, and um, we hope to see you next week. Till then, stay safe and see you all. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, good night doctor. Good night. Good night.